I realize the title is a little bit vague. Uh, I guess like the tagline was supposed to be why art needs uh, open source. Um, originally, uh, I was going to do like a little bit of a performance afterwards, but uh, due to like hardware constraints, I'm just gonna have like a little table out in the demo room so for people to just play around. Um, is it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, so a bit of an introduction. My name is Sean Martel. I'm a sound designer and experimental new media artist. Most of my work is done, I guess, in video and 3D, uh, making kind of like weird video stuff and in installations. Um, a lot of my work is about like the assemblage. How do we uh, take apart the the workflow of a thing and re reconfigure it to make new kinds of stuff, um, and purposely misusing tools to do that. <laughs> the first, uh, so a lot of my time before, I guess, like getting into tech was like DIY punk spaces uh, and community spaces where I was just kind of like dabbling in uh, circuit bending and then later getting into like the, the more constructed stuff. Um, and some of the lessons that I learned are definitely your problems are not special. And really early, this is the hardest thing to, to hear and remember because I was always just thinking that everything that was happening was just my problem, but there's so much documentation and it is amazing. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> um, the second one was that like open source is inherently radical, especially in a time where we are cons constantly met with barriers to knowledge, uh, whether it be intellectual, social, or economic. The fact that we are gathering here to celebrate and enjoy the kindness that people have with their knowledge makes it possible for anyone to get their hands dirty. And that's amazing. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the fourth one is you can just do stuff. Like nobody's just waiting out in the bushes like whenever you're trying to try something new for the first time just to tell you that you can't do it. And that's also amazing. Um, and support is always great. So um, a lot of my inspiration comes from like philosophy because philosophy is like how we create culture. Um, I feel like philosophy and art just kind of are the, the two pieces of the Venn diagram uh, because if we're going to be creating futures that we want, um, we need to be able to communicate the beliefs and values through the things that we create. So I think open source is like definitely part of this philosophy that facilitates that, but uh, maybe sometimes forgets how important that is. Um, and so a large, I guess like two big contributors to like philosophy for me and making are uh, the Donna Haraway reading for staying with the trouble and object oriented ontology. Um, so stay, staying with the trouble, like two big things to roll out is like, things are going to get really weird and sticky with your research. Um, and uh, when they get weird and sticky and put you in weird binding situations where you're trying to understand and uh, categorize things th to just let it go, but also don't be afraid to care. And don't let it, don't be afraid to let it change you in, in surprising and like thought provoking and heartwarming ways. And the other one for object oriented ontology is like relationships and experiences between all things, all objects are finite. There is no way to know everything about anything or everything about anyone. Um, and that's kind of absolutely magic. Um, but also if things are at their most real when they break, uh, that they don't, they defy our biases. Um, especially which, uh, with objects, we always want to like invisibilize stuff before we need it. And so we go and then we go get the tool or go get the software or hardware and we always just want it to work. Um, but it's not that easy because things break over time. And when they break, that's how our relationships deepen with those objects and with those materials. Um, so I guess... <laughs> 
why we're all here today, or I guess like my work, is the EMF turntable. Uh, this was a musical instrument that I built um, using an electric sluice circuit. I can get to that later. Um, but what it does is it's a microphone for electromagnetic fields. Um, so this picks up electromagnetic magnetic fields through uh, small personal devices, and I use it for music curation or creation. So originally, I had found this article that Jonas Grushka had made uh, and uh, provided the bomb for. So I started building it, and originally it was created to be a, like a field microphone. So you go into a space, and then you read all of the electromagnetic fields in a space so you can recreate what that space is supposed to sound like um, with electromagnetic magnetic, uh, oscillations. Um, Originally, so the reason why this needs to exist, to the circuit, is because electromagnetic fields are not something you can hear with your, your ears. They, they exist in a totally different uh, range other than the human hearing spectrum. Um, all the way down into, like, I want to say, uh, like, radio static. And like, radio static exists all around us, but we don't ever hear it. Um, also, some of it, we are actually just walking through 1% of remnants of the Big Bang, which is like kind of a crazy thought to think of. Um, so coming back to Gronis Krushka, um, he also created Lom Audio, which is like an like a experimental music label um, and does manufacturing for like a lot of like funky field recording instruments, including things like a magnetophone, where it's just like just like a magnet spike that you stick on the ground so you can hear what goes on in there. So when I decided to change the form factor of this the circuit or like why I'm using it, um, it gained like a performance and like bodily element. So uh, I have to play it as though it is an instrument. It's not a thing that I just capture with, um, that I have full mobility of how things are captured. Um, and um. And I guess that also kind of brings into this idea of like being able to change how things are being read by how I'm interacting with the objects themselves. So if I'm reading a phone or a tablet, by pressing the buttons, by swiping the screen, I'm creating different tones of sound. I guess this is mostly just about, yeah, what I was talking about, the human hearing spectrum, but the also the, uh, the range of visible light. So what does this have to do with culture? Um, open source documentation lays the groundwork for people that work with content to broadcast new values and bring it to new places it may not have been without the content attached. So that's why it's really important to like, sometimes even the form factor really changes everything. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be changed that much to create like a whole new world. Um, so when we talk about electromagnetic fields, obviously it's not just uh, the things in the air or the the stuff in our pockets, but um, this is connected to like a whole world, both like big and small, of like how we uh, interact with things or how we view other objects or other animals. Um, this goes as big as like our whole planet with the North and South Poles. It creates the magnetosphere that keeps us safe from solar rays. Uh, that's a little bit big to think about, but without it, um, all of our fauna would just be like torn away from our planet. Um, and then on the animal spectrum, uh, a lot of the electromagnetic fields are ways to navigate the planet. Um, I guess I'll see you later, or if you want to get a hold of me <laughs> uh, about all of this in socializing, ask me questions, I'll be on the Discord. I'll also probably post um, a track that I've created with it if you want to go listen to that. Uh, thank you so much.